Hi everybody! Today's project is going to be how to make a mandala bead. Um, this is a special request from Christine, so I hope you enjoy. And as usual, you can find me through Facebook, is the most likely source, and also through my webpage at geniecoxglass.com. And so for this project, um, you want to prepare uh, what color schemes you want for your mandala pendant slash bead. Um, I have um, a bunch of uh, red in transparent and opaque, aqua or, tur or turquoise, and then um, purples. So it's whatever color palette you want to work with. And I have this sped up because this video it was just like, 48 minutes long or 50 minutes long. So they do take a long time to make. Um, and I'm using a fat mandrel. I'm starting out with uh, the transparent uh, dark turquoise. And I'm using a quarter inch mandrel. Um, a lot of these are made on the bigger mandrels, but you can use a regular size mandrel also. It doesn't have to be a fat mandrel. I'm just doing it the way all, a lot of people do these um, with a wider mandrel. And so it'll have a big hole in the middle. And so um, it is sped up just to save time. You can also uh, slow the videos down, any of my videos down. You can slow them down um, with the little gear um, symbol that's on the YouTube videos. Um, and you could slow them down half speed or quarter speed or what have you, just to see a better detail if you want. Um, so now I'm layering on some of the opaque uh, turquoise on top of this transparent um, aqua and just whenever you do a step for these uh, mandala beads um, you want to make sure you're nice and rounded and centered up um, that's probably the most uh, important part of these beads is um, so that everything will say, stay centered and even um, if you start off a little crooked your final project um, can end up being more crooked because these are built you know, from the inside out. And so it could just get more and more out of whack the larger you go. And uh, so you just wanna make sure that every step, every layer of glass you put on, um, you try to keep it even. So you look at it you know, as you're heating it, but then also look at it straight on down the mandrel. It's a really good way to show where there's thinner glass or thicker glass or where you might need to add, you know, extra glass for your bumps or what have you. Um, and so it it's just takes a little practice. And so what I'm doing now is I'm adding some light. This is that new um, purple, the new uh, violet, I think, from Ephetre. And I'm adding little dots. And this is going to be my first series of dot effects. And you can basically layer these mandalas any way you want, any colors you want. Um, it's great to mix transparent and opaques together and uh, get different combos going. Um, they're really neat, and everyone is unique, uh, which is great about them. Um, so now I'm adding um, dark purple glycine on top of this um, violet this lighter it almost looks lavender and I'm just trying to add a little bit more glass to get the dots all the same size and so I'm gonna melt these down and I always like after every step I already always look straight down the mandrel at it to see if it looks like it's round from that angle looking straight at it um, down the length of the mandrel um, and you'll so you'll see me move in my mandrel in that direction so I can just keep an eye on it so I'm melting those down, not all the way. They're still raised bumps, so they're not all the way melted in. And see, I just looked at it. <laughs> and uh, But I'm adding more layers. You can add as many or as few layers as you want, as many different colors as you want. You could just do a two color, or you can do you know, seven, 12 different colors in these things. Um, it's whatever variety and whatever layering. Um, if you want to do more stripes of glass, if you want to do more dots, less dots, um, it's however you imagine your mandala to take shape. Um, so it's, you know, really great, real good variety. Um, you could just have fun with it. All different shapes, sizes, colors. And so now I got white dots on top of um, the purples. And I think I'm going to add even another color. 
And so now I need to even it out because you know sometimes your bead will get a little wider on one side than the other. But there's the white dots. And now I'm going to add red. So I'm really mixing up the colors here. I'm just picking up whatever I feel like. Um, but it's nice to have some stringers around and some uh, full rods around of whatever colors you want to use before you start. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure all the dots are about the even, even amount of glass. Um, I think I actually add some more um, after I melt them down here because I don't think they were totally even in the amount of glass there was. Um, so I'm just melting those in, not fully in, um, so they're still a little bit raised. And I look down at it again just to see. And I'm, I'm trying to use my bigger mashers, but it seemed like my smaller mashers worked better. Because I'm, I'm kind of sitting at an angle when I'm doing this because of the camera tripod. So I'm a little off-center than the way I usually sit. Um, so it was kind of a little difficult for me to use those uh, larger mashers. It was an awkward feeling. But anyway, so I'm just straightening this up, straightening this up, and I found I'm looking at it, looking down at it there, and I'm like, these couple of dots need a little more uh, red in there. They, I need a, I, they need to be a little bit bigger because they weren't in line with the other ones when I look straight down at that um, bead there. And so that's what I'm doing there. And after this, I'm going to start slowing down because I'm going to I'm going to do the first pull or push, what, however you want to do it, um, for the design. Here's it's kind of glowing still, so it's a little tough to see. But the different layers and those dots that are still a little bumpy on the surface. And now I'm going to slow down uh, the video because I'm going to start uh, pulling them out or pushing them, however you want to do it. And I'm going to use a razor blade. Uh, for the first example, you could also use a tungsten pick. And I'm just heating like that whole side the, the, from the top of the dot down the side as far as I want to push that glass. And I'm actually trying to push it with the point of the razor blade. But I am kind of making little slices in there, but um, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to push it mostly down as far as I want. And you can use a pick, a tungsten pick, or... Um, you know, a regular steel pick. Um, and this is not my preferred my way. My preferred way is actually using a stringer of glass. And so that's what I'm going to use in the rest of the video. I just wanted to show you, you can use a different tool. And so I'm just pushing them down, all these dots, down towards almost to the mandrel, but not all the way. And now for the other side, I am going to use just a little piece of the transparent aqua glass and this I think is a better view so I have it really slowed down here and I heat that whole dot down as far to the mandrel as I want to move it and I pull that dot down and then I just pull it out and there's a little nub left if it's too much of a nub you could try to grab that off too but um, this was so tiny that I just push it in just push that thing that little nub down and it'll meld in to the rest of your bead and it should be fine see i'm heating the whole like half of the dot plus down the side of where i want to pull it so all of those layers move together if you only heated the dot part on the top only the dot glass would move but if you heat all the layers on that side all of them will move down if that makes sense. And so I just continue, I'm going to speed it up again, and I just continue and go all the way around and pull all those dots down, trying to get them even to one another, pulling them down the same distance. And I'm pulling them down into that um, aqua, the transparent aqua that's closest to the mandrel, but not all the way to the mandrel. And so I just pull them all down. If there's any extra nubs on there, I, I pull those off. And so I just go all the way around this bead until they're all the same. And so this is basically how you could do these little pulled designs. And after this is done, I am going to uh, continue to melt this and add more layers to it. So you can pull down, oh, there, there's the 
that part and um, so I'm going to heat all these in make sure all those nubs are melded in and the uh, pulled design is melted down and kind of flattening them with my marver there and I'm going to use my little um, smashers too to flatten them make sure everything's all even that's the most important part with these so you, you so you keep them even to the last layer to the outside layer it pretty much stays even and so that's what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to add more layers. So I'm melting all this down flat now so that I can add more layers of glass. So that's why I'm rounding it out here. I'm flattening it down. And this time I'm going to add some transparent color just so that you can still see the uh, other colors like inside. I didn't want to use an opaque here because I didn't want to cover up all the red and the purple and all that that's um, on the top. Uh, I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, so I'm using uh, just transparent clear. I could have used my um, turquoise again, um, but uh, I decided to use clear. It's whatever colors you want to use really. So it's only if you want to just have the side uh, design showing or if you want to be able to see into the bead, it's all up to you of uh, whether you use transparents, opaques, or a variety of both. And so I'm just trying to add a really thick layer here so that you can see um, all the those dots inside that were pulled out um, when it's finished. And I think I'll have to add more glass because my rod broke when I was putting this on, so it kind of went on a little lumpy but I'm going to straighten that all out and then I might have to add a little more clear to um, get it even. See I'm looking at the side of it and I see which sides look thinner. I'll add a little bit more clear there to those parts and try to just even it out. But I want a nice thick clear. And then I'll start with some color again. And so um, after I do this second layer of dots, um, I basically completed the bead at that point. I could have continued going and adding more and more layers. You can add as many layers as you want and get this bead as, as big as you want. <laughs> um, it might get a little unruly and want to crack on you if it's really big. Um, but um, I just stopped for the sake of the length of the video. Um, but it looks like a pretty good mandala when it's done. And so now, see, I'm looking down at it, and I'm trying to even out that clear, and trying to make a nice, round, even circle. So that helps, too, if you um, just smash it around where it's sticking out a little too far. Um, mash it around very gently to try to even out your um, disc. And so now there's that with the clear on it and you could see those dots underneath, but we are gonna cover them up, so I'm gonna put actually more dots. So um, this time I'm starting with the light turquoise, and it's an opaque, and I'm gonna add several more layers um, to these dots, just like I did the underlying dots. And so you could basically add just whatever colors you want, um, layering them on. Uh, the only thing is, is once you, like I partially melt the dots in, and then I look at it. See, I look straight on, and I say, oh, does one dot look like it's too small compared to the other dots? And I usually add more glass. It's not that often that I remove glass. I usually add more. It's the easiest way. But if one does seem a lot bigger than the others, I will remove some glass. And so I'm just kind of melting those down, looking at it, making sure it looks fairly even around. I'm going to add more. <laughs> that one dot just didn't want to cooperate, wouldn't get uh, big enough. And then I'm, I'm melting them down to make sure that they're all the same height also, that I melted them in evenly. And so then uh, when they're all the same height, you could see better if you need more glass or not. And just sometimes the dot, some dots don't want to melt as fast as other dots. <laughs> and so there's those dots. And now I'm going to add even more color. So I'm doing the dark purple again. It looks pretty much black in this video, but it's purple.
So I'm just adding and adding whatever colors you want to combine together and uh, so whatever designs you want to make in these. Um, they're really fun. So I'm melting these down and then I'm going to check again, make sure they're even. That's the most important part of these uh, beads. And also, um, which I didn't do on this bead, a lot of times um, uh, people will actually, um, the, the last color that they put on the outside edge, they'll actually poke holes and have like little air bubbles at the end, you know, at, at that the final outside dot, um, which is kind of neat too. And I didn't do that in this video, but you can do that too. You can add air bubbles um, at the tops of your dots the outer ones so of course people can see them uh, if they were buried inside this mandala you probably wouldn't see them so now I added some red um, on top of that purple and I believe it's an opaque red and I do need to add a little more color I'm trying to melt them in just to see if they're even enough or not and I'm focusing on some dots more than others so you could see me slowing down and speeding up when I turn and that's because I'm trying to melt in you know one dot more than another because it, they're not melting in evenly and so I'm just going around I'm adding more color and guess what I'm adding even more <laughs> So this just keeps going on and on and on. And, and you can actually keep going and making more layers. You can make uh, solid layers. You can make partial layers. You can do the dot layers. Um, it's whatever you really want to put into these beads. Um, but they do take a long time. And they take uh, patience to make sure that every time you add glass to it, that it's even um, around your mandrel, that it's pretty even. Um, so that they stay, it stays centered and that everything looks um, even all the way around uh, when you have the final bead. And so I'm just melting that in and then I believe I'm even going to add another color. Oh, now it's time to straighten out again because some of the um, dots were starting to bulge outward a little bit. So I just want to keep that disc evened up and fairly thin. and I keep looking at it see how I keep looking at it um, just want to make sure that's all symmetrical when you're looking at it and if you have to like melt and use gravity to uh, have a uh, dot like fall in one direction so it'll be more sp you know spaced evenly with the other dots um, sometimes you have to do that and try to move it in one direction or another um, but like I said, if you start out even with your first layer, um, it's a lot easier to keep your other layers even. And so that's, that's like pr probably the most difficult part of making these. So now I'm melting in, I think that was purple again. So on top of the white. And so I'm melting those in and my dots are getting just slightly smaller and smaller and smaller as I uh, go on the top uh, after, after as I put on layers of glass. They get slightly smaller and smaller and smaller so you can see the different layers in there. And so I'm just heating some dots at the same time or some dots uh, I'm focusing on some dots rather than others and now I'm going to actually pull down again and I'm using my preferred method which is a stringer but you can use um, a tungsten pick or a razor blade what, whatever you feel comfortable with when you move this glass and this time I am only pulling down to that clear section I'm not pulling all the I could have pulled these dots all the way down to the center like the first ones but since I already had those um, pulled down in the previous layer that I did um, I decided only to pull these dots down halfway so you could pull them down as far as you want or as little as you want or you don't even have to pull them down at all um, it's all up to you so I'm just gonna go around I'm 
heating that section, the whole section that I'm going to be pulling to, from the top of the dot down, and getting off that little excess glass. And I'll just go around on either side. until they're all even. And also like on the other side, you can you can have two different sides. You don't have to have them both the same. So like on this side, I could have had it like this where I pulled it down halfway. But on the other side, I might have decided, hey, I want to pull this one down all the way to the bottom of the mandrel. Or maybe not even pulled them out all, just let them let them ray let them stay raised like they are. Um, so it's all up to you. Uh, of how you want this to look in the end. Um, but the side decoration, so after you're done creating um, your uh, disc mandala layers, um, after you're done adding all these and you say, okay, that's as big as I want it and that's the way I want it to look, um, then you can also decorate it on the sides. You can actually put little dot work or what have you on the sides and both sides can have different decoration um, like little dots and such. And I believe on this one I did add um, some little dot work to both sides. And I think I put them in, I put the little dots in, I just put one layer of dots and I just put them on in different locations on the two sides. And uh, so if this was a bigger um, mandala, um, you could I could have had much more decoration on there. So it's all up to you of how big you want these and, um, and what decoration and what color and how you want your layers to work. I could have had more striped layers. Um, it seemed like I was more dominant with the dotting on the on this one but I could have had more striped layers instead of dots if I wanted um, and pulled those down into each other um, so it's all up to you of how you want these layered and what colors you use etc but it's really fun because like everyone is gonna look different and unique And so I'm just heating this up. I'm trying to get it all even, getting the sides um, all straightened up so it's straight on the, on the edges. And I'm kind of out of shot there, but I'm just, I'm just flattening it a little bit. And I'm melting in those dots, not totally. I could melt them in totally if I want, but I left them a little bumpy. I just want it to look fairly even. And there's basically the way the finished mandala looks and now I'm going to use a stringer of red and just put some finishing touch touches on this mandala. So I'm putting some little raised dots on the outside and then on the one layer I'm putting the little dots in the clear section, putting little tiny dots in the clear section and on the other side I am putting the little dots in the opaque turquoise section that's closer to the mandrel. And so this is where you can get the variance for two different looks on two different sides. And if this was a lot bigger, I could have used, you know, maybe several layers of different color dots and put them in there. Um, I probably could have put more layers on this one, but I was just trying to show um, that this side decoration at the end is just something you can do. Um, so it's just as an example. And I had one dot a little too big. I had to take some extra glass off of there. But I just melt these in. So I'm totally melting in flush the side dots. And then the dots around the circumference, I'm going to leave them just a little bit raised around that outside circumference. Um, but the sides are totally melted in. So now I'm just melting in that those... Uh, outside dots and I'm trying to I'm going in and out of the flame because I'm trying to melt them uh, the same distance trying to get trying to get that way <laughs> anyway and I'm just doing a little more flattening making sure everything's melded in there together and then I'm gonna slow down and zoom in so you can see the finished mandala 
And so there's the one side with the dots that are in the turquoise area. They look black, but they're red. And then I have the other side where the dots are actually in the clear section. And that's the finished mandala bead. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed.